independent artists, and there's a lot of us that are independent artists. Here's the thing, and I want to mention this to anybody out there who has a blues radio show or who has or is booking a festival. We are in a catch-22, we lady artists. We get told there's not enough nationally touring female artists to make a 50-50 bill on a festival. There aren't enough nationally known female blues artists to make a 50-50 radio show. That's half men, half women on the playlist. But that there's a reason why there's not so many that are so well known. It's because we're not getting booked 50-50 on the festival and we're not getting played 50-50 on the radio. Now, I really appreciate every single DJ who has ever played my music. I mean, it means the world to me, Mark. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I just hope that more DJs will think about their playlist in terms of parody. You see what I'm saying? Think about right. the playlist and not don't just have a women's show once in a while to make up for the fact that 80% of the artists that you spin are male. Just mix us in. Same thing with the festivals. Just, just mix us in a little bit more, and you'll see the profile of some of these fantastic female artists that are out there because we're out there. We're working hard. We're playing. You will see our profiles blow up because, you know, talent is talent. It doesn't matter what race, what sex, talent is talent. And we cannot be heard unless we get the spins on the radio and we cannot be seen unless we get the bookings at the festival. That's very true. And uh, uh, I do believe that you have Laura there as well. I just wanted to hear from Laura as well because she's definitely yeah, got a, very, she, she's got a fascinating you? story. She's got a fascinating story because, <laughs> I mean, when I was reading about her, you know, she'll have to tell me how much of the Wikipedia on her is correct as well. But it was talking about her definitely being born in the war-torn country of Vietnam in 1975 and abandoned at birth and then definitely uh, was part of one of those early rescues that were done during the Vietnam War, which is, seems like many moons ago, but it really wasn't that long ago. I mean, it was, uh, what, 75, so we're talking almost 40, uh, I was born 62, just turned 57, so we're talking almost 43, 45. 44 years ago. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, what was and you were part of the Operation Baby Lift? So, what was that like, just being involved in that as a kid? And also, how did that kind of whole life lead you into the blues yourself? Because, like I said, it seems to me that that's just natural to be in the blues after all the things that you went through as a youngster. You're absolutely right there. I mean, um, I'll tell you what. Um, Operation Baby Lift was something that the government did. I mean, can you imagine it? They, they saw orphans that needed help from this war, and they brought us to the United States to be adopted. So, I mean, times have changed, how times have changed. And oh, yeah. so, you know, when I, when I look at what's happening now, I, I, it makes me sad, you know, and, and feel very grateful that I got an opportunity to live um, a different life. And um, that, doesn't, that doesn't, you know, I don't, I don't mean to diminish the fact that my parents might have been killed in this war by, you know, American troops. Right. It's, 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 there's, there's a lot to it. And, and, but at the same time, um, I wouldn't be living my dream playing American roots music if I wasn't, if, if the American troops hadn't rescued me from Vietnam. So, I mean, it's, it's a very complex, um, topic, but, uh, I think my lucky stars every day I realize, you know, especially on, on the, and on July 4th weekend, what it means to be an American to me. It's like how many people really reflect on what that means. And I feel very lucky. I, and I know it's really volatile right now with the political, you know, scene, but I feel grateful that I get to play with people like Lisa, that I get to, you know, do what my compass has always directed me to do, which is it's always been towards music the blues thing happened by a complete accident. I mean, I kind of feel like the blues found me, really. <laughs> but so I feel, I that, feel blessed. What do you mean by the blues well, found you? I mean, was there any particular blues artist that you really started grooving in and really started liking, or was it just something that you literally stumbled upon accidentally? <laughs> 
Well, I, I, you know, I have a similar story with like Lisa, you know, I, I grew up with a lot of rock and, you know, you know, heart, they, they were, you know, those, that, that band made me want to sing and, um, Pat Benatar and, um, you know, the blues thing happened later. It was like, I just wanted to join a rock band. And then someone said, Hey, if you want to meet musicians, why don't you go to a blues jam where it all started? So I just wanted to meet musicians. And a lot of blues musicians are multifaceted. They're not just one, they're not just blues musicians. So, you know, a lot of us have a lot of different things that we do besides blues. I played in top 40 as well, like Lisa and all of those experiences have helped me kind of find my sound, which is a long life journey. So I went to a blues jam next, you know, I was running, you know, two blues jams simultaneously for like a decade. And I, I know, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot about the blues and it wasn't until later that I kind of, um, that I understood what BB King was doing. And I, you know, at the time when I got into the blues jam, Susan Tedeschi was the hot plate on the hot ticket, which I mean, God bless her. She still is, but I could relate with what she was doing. And so then, you know, it kind of, it started from kind of a modern blues artist like herself. And then I kind of t- kept going back and kept going back. And then, you know, Donny Hathaway came into my picture and I was, you know, blown away and he's more of a soul, you know, blues guy, but it's been a journey, you know, it's been a journey and, um, the blues was, yeah, it happened by accident completely. Hey, and, it found me. I didn't find like, it. <laughs> seems yeah. like that happens a lot of times. And just to get back and then I'll come back to the music stuff. I'm imagining that all of this stuff that's going on with our Latin brothers and everything, it's probably to some degree, um, caused you to reflect back on some of what you went through as a youth as well, because you're right. That's almost the polar opposite of what you went through in terms of being actually, helped and these folks are actually being yep. detained and everything so i'm sure that that's yeah. probably oftentimes got you thinking about the contrast between what's happening now and what's going on when you were coming oh. into this country every day every day i see these news stories i'm reminded of what i went through and it's a trigger you know it makes me makes me feel grateful and it also makes me feel the pain all over again too I mean, I'm reliving, you know, I'm watching these children being abandoned, being taken away from their families. And, you know, on the topic of Operation Baby, Lift, there were some kids that were taken away from their families and got returned. So there were some, there were some things where they thought they were orphans and then they came to America and they were talking about their family. And then there was a lawsuit and they did get returned. So this isn't really necessarily the first time this has happened. Um, and I and I I pray for these kids every day that they get returned to their families. I mean, this is just a nightmare. I can't believe it. Yeah, definitely. I and hope you talk about look, look deep and find, figure it out. Yeah, and you talk about the music and everything, and coming back to the music and everything. Yeah. Um, I remember talking to Lisa and then bringing Lisa back into this conversation last, um, not this past weekend, but the weekend before. I had a good friend of mine that actually did a concert at Hey Time. He's a bassist, but a lot of people. He's actually known kind of as a jazz R&B bassist, but his claim to fame is actually that he's a rap bassist because um, it's nice. my good friend Chip Sharon. And if you remember the song Rapper's Delight, he did the bass mm-hmm. line to that song, which was kind of like one of the nice. first billion-dollar hits in terms of rap music and kind of got oh, rap music yeah. into its national fame and everything that the Sugar Hill Gang put out. But his bass guitar is actually at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame now because that, oh. like I said, was one of the first guitars, and he did a concert huh. for us at the Hay yeah. Center, not this past weekend, but the weekend before. So you're right. A lot of times people don't understand how much of a mix match the music is. Because a lot of times mm-hmm. I think people try to sometimes label musicians and kind of pigeonhole them into one category or another. But, you know, when I've listened to both of y'all's music, I can see y'all mm-hmm. playing not just at the blues clubs or blues festivals, but I can see mm-hmm. you playing at a jazz festival. I can see y'all playing at the R&B festivals. I mean, I would not be surprised if you didn't have engagements if you don't already have them at Summerfest, which is a big festival right. in Milwaukee. It's kind of across all uh, genres and everything. So yeah. definitely I could even see y'all playing Art of Cool, which is a jazz-oriented festival here in Durham, but they try to mix up jazz, hip-hop, and other music styles. So it seems to me that um, I remember when I was in college in the 80s, I felt that music was going in this direction, that it would be that we might try to categorize musicians but in reality, a lot of them were doing, um, would be performing across genres. Is that what y'all are Absolutely. finding now? Because it means that that's what the direction seems to be going. That I don't know that you can necessarily qualify a lot of people just as one style or another. Right. It's a large umbrella. That's all right. It's a big tent. I've done a lot of gigs with an artist named Karen Lovely. 
Uh-huh. And she had uh, her last album was really Roots and Americana. I had some blues on there, but it was it was more of an Americana record. Mm-hmm. And you know she would still play these blues festivals and get a very warm welcome. So yeah, it, it's it's uh, you know who talent is talent, like you said. I love talent is talent. I love a shuffle. Mm-hmm. I love a da 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 but I don't want to hear four days of that at a festival. I'm sorry. It's just too much. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you to that kind of festival. I just say it. We'll drive y'all ourselves actually... crazy if we play the same thing over and over again. We'll, we'll lose our own minds if yeah. we play the same thing all the time. Yep. Because y'all are calling us from, uh, you actually got a festival that you're getting ready to play at very shortly. So tell us a little bit about the festival that you're playing and where y'all are playing, because I know you're calling us from out of uh, state, because when I booked you and everything, you told me that you had a festival coming up. So where are y'all playing this time around? Well, we are playing at the Waterfront Blues Fest, which is the largest festival west of the Mississippi. And uh, it's not just blues. There's R&B and soul acts. There's an entire day and an entire stage dedicated to Zydeco that has a big dance floor. There's four big stages at this fest and one smaller stage. It's really incredible. Um, four days of music. It's like fifty dollars or something that's to buy a nuts. pass, which is nothing. Wow, that's and nuts. all the benefits go to the Oregon Food Bank to help feed the needy. So it's really a special thing. I think Robert Cray is headlining this one. Oh, wow. So Robert Cray will be there. Yeah, We've so had him at the uh... – We always have a big headliner, and it brings everybody in. And there's a lot of blues acts that are going to be there that maybe the general public doesn't know. So they come in to see the big headliners, and they get exposed to real blues music and soul music while they're there. So it's it's a really special event, and people can check it out, waterfrontbluesfest.org, I do believe. I think that's it. But just Google Waterfront Blues Fest. It's huge. I mean, I'm telling you, we're going to wear comfortable shoes. <laughs> it's really big. There's a lot of hiking you have to do with this thing. I believe it. And what do y'all tell folks when they complain about the prices? Because I had Suleiman – um, on recently, who's a large um, promoter here, and we had that conversation where he's talking about the pricing of tickets, and he's basically like, you know, making the argument that it's all about what um, the market will bear and things of that nature. You know and he what? also talked about how this festival is cheap. I've seen a lot of other festivals that are way more expensive, and this particular festival is cheap. And people need to understand how much goes into that festival. Not only that, at this particular festival, most of the people working it are volunteers, and this is money for the food bank. So quit complaining. Donate some money to the food bank and come to the festival. That's right. <laughs> it's a win-win. I, 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 it's a win-win. <laughs> you're giving back and you're supporting music. I mean, you can't, yeah. you can't. it doesn't get much better than that. Mm-hmm. No, I agree with you on that. We definitely need to support our music on a uh, more regular basis and things of that nature. Definitely. But what do you tell both of you young performers when you find folks that are wanting to get into the blues? I know part of it is you probably tell them to, you know, tell their stories, and a lot of times the stories might be sad, and it might involve some of the pains in their lives, because I think both of you, mm-hmm. some yeah. of your songs definitely touch on the pains of both present life as well as uh, past lives, not just in terms of... Uh, the abuse kind of stuff, but also just in terms of relationships. Some of you have probably gone through bad relationships or good relationships or whatever the type of relationships are. But I imagine that you probably tell people to kind of reach into their background in order to come up with these great blues songs. But if a young blues artist comes to you or just a young musician in general, because I imagine you're probably approached by folks that don't necessarily want to do blues. They might want to do rap or they might want to do um, R&B or they might want to do rock. But when these young people come mm-hmm. to you and they find out that you are performers, what kind of advice do you give them? Well, uh, learn how to make a really good bowl of ramen noodles. <laughs> <laughs> learn how to sleep in your van. <laughs> the, the practical stuff like that, you know. And also, the the music has to matter. It can't just be about... I want to be cool, and I want to be on stage, and I want to look good. You have to pay attention to the music. 
You have to learn the style. You have to listen to that music that you're playing. I mean, I can't tell you these blues 